Did it's you say recording. Record? Every once in a while, I'll get up and just go check and make sure. So, what? All right. Let's pray. Lord God, just, I pray that we exalt Jesus Christ in the Word, not me. Let it never be about me, Lord God, but you, Lord God. Give me the mouth to speak, to speak holiness and righteousness by Jesus Christ, Lord God. Help me to be clear and slow, but not a snail slow, Lord, but at the point that we can study and learn your word and not miss anything. It's a wonderful word, Lord God, and I thank you. And even the moment would be, Lord, if you were to call us home now and be before the word. For Jesus' sake, Lord God, amen. All right, so the Gospel of John. Yeah, the Gospel of John is one of the simplest ones. It's detailed. It's good for a new Christian. It's good for those who are not Christians. You can take the Gospel of John. And if you got someone who's an agnostic or wants to learn, you set them all, say, hey, listen, read one chapter a day and pray. Just one chapter. That's all you need to do every night before you go to bed and read and pray. And if he's surely searching, he will come to the knowledge of the truth of the Gospel of John. Now, John 1, the Gospel of John has 21 chapters, 879 verses, and the words, no one really knows how many words. There are 879 verses. Now, there are four Gospels. There's Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Matthew is written Jesus as the Jewish king of Israel. So I, I avoid Matthew very, very much because Matthew's written to that Jewish king. Nowhere in Scripture is Jesus king of the church. Mark is written as Jesus as the servant of God. Jesus as the servant of God. He done everything that God expected him to do. Luke writes Jesus as the son of man. That man side of him. That 100% man. He's 100% God and he's 100% man. And Luke puts him as the man. Christ Jesus. And the gospel that we're studying now, John puts Jesus as God. And if you got any Jehovah Witness friends, John is going to kill him. Because this entire gospel sets for Jesus as God. Now John 1.1. 1, 1. And we're not going to get far as far as the gospel, John, but we're, hopefully we'll get far in learning about the Bible. It says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. And the Word was God. So, it's funny, here we are already to the last Gospel. And we see in the beginning. And we see this phrase somewhere else in the Bible. If we return our Bibles to Genesis 1-1. Way back to the first part of the Bible. Bible. Forgive me, my fingers don't open pages. Mm -hmm. So we do have an, you do have an advantage of finding a place in the Bible because it takes me many tries to turn my pages. Oh, bear with me. Oh, I hate. I have no feeling in my fingers. Okay. Make sure the thing is too short before. Okay. Last week I didn't get anything. So Genesis 1 1. With John 1 1. We see in the beginning God created the heaven and earth. Well, that's interesting that we find these in the beginning Genesis. In the beginning the Gospel of John. And remember, I said, the Gospel of John is written as Jesus as God. So 
So Genesis says, in the beginning, God. John starts off, in the beginning, the Word. With a capital W. In the beginning is found 17 times in 17 verses throughout your Bible. 17 times in 17 verses. It's found 13 verses in the Old Testament. 13 verses in the Old Testament and 4 verses in the New Testament. Again, that one verse in, in John. So we have something between Genesis and the Gospel of John that is the same. Because we got to learn when the Holy Spirit wrote the Bible, when the Holy Spirit wrote the Bible, He was not playing Scrabble. He didn't have letters on the board saying, okay, what kind of word do I got to make now? He positions the word in the Bible, the Holy Spirit, in a particular frame that God wants it to be. Now, many people say, well, man wrote the Bible. True. Man is the pen, but the Holy Spirit is the ink. And when man wrote the Bible by the Holy Spirit, that's called inspiration. Now, there are many great books out there. Paul writes great books, but he was not inspired by God. Tom Sawyer was not inspired by God to be written. It was written a wonderful book. But it's lacking God in it. So, let's take our Bibles to Philippians chapter 4, the New Testament. Philippians chapter 4. You got Galatians, Grandpa, Ephesians, Eats, Philippians, Popcorn. Hey, you remembered it. All right. I had a good memory once. Philippians chapter 4, verse 15. Ephesians, Galatians. It's right after Romans, 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, Ephesians, Philippians. No, you went too fast. You just went too far. It's just before Colossians. Philippians chapter 4. Verse 15. And I'm in the wrong book. Huh? I'm in Colossians. Yeah, I'm in the wrong book. That's like too far. So Philippians chapter 4. When I get here. Verse 15. Now ye Philippians, know also that in the beginning, I said, remember, it's four, time, four verses in the New Testament. Well, here's one of two, halfway through. In the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, a church communicated with me as concerning giving and receiving, but ye only. So, the part of the verse I want to look at here is in the beginning of the gospel. We have Genesis 1, in the beginning, God. We have John chapter 1, in the beginning, the Word. And now we have in Philippians, in the beginning, the Gospel. Now the Gospel is that Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the Scriptures and was buried and arose again according to the Scriptures. And John's Gospel points to Jesus as God. So when we have God in the beginning... We have the Word in the beginning, and we have the Gospel in the beginning. And we have God in the center, we've got the Word. We're running to find out in the Gospel of John who are we talking about. It all seems to be centered around God, and I've already said, a Jehovah Witness cannot study the Gospel of John. It's about God, Jesus. Now let's take 1 Corinthians 15.3, just to the left. Couple of books over to the left. First Corinthians 15. Now I've already said it, but we're going to read it, so you don't think I'm throwing things out there. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 3. 
we read. For I deliver unto you, first of all, that which I receive, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the Scriptures. Well, what's the Scriptures? It's the Word. What's the Word? Scriptures. Scripture is a word that means studying. Studying the Word. And that He was buried. And that He rose again the third day, according to the Scriptures. So we have, in the beginning here, by Paul, Referring back to what John wrote in the beginning, the word of a gospel that's about God. In the beginning, God. And one more place here, Hebrews 1.10. To the right, a little bit late in the New Testament. Hebrews 1.10. Titus, James, when you get to James, you went too far, I did. And I came back. Hebrews 1, verse 10. Another place we will find in the beginning. And we're not spreading, oh, what's the book of Hebrews about? We're speaking with the verse in the beginning. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 10. If you need help finding Rachel, can find her place in the Bible. Train us to child with the, the Proverbs, train us to child. My parents didn't. I, I grew up no. I grew up as a Roman Catholic. Yeah, me say too. that. <laughs> that was no Bible. First Corinthians one ten. And thou, Lord, Lord Jehovah, God, in the beginning, has laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the works of thy hands. Oh, there's creation. There's Genesis one one. So what we're looking at, we got in the beginning God, in the beginning the Word, in the beginning the Gospel, in the beginning creation. And Hebrews chapter 1 is focused upon the Lord Jesus Christ. Again. So let's go back to John 1.1 1, 1 again. And we're building a foundation. We're trying to figure out, okay, how do we put all these in the beginnings together? What have we got? And we will come upon one focus. It says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, with God, and the Word was God. And you've got the focus here. The Word was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. In the beginning, creation, there was a word. Not a big bang. There was no bang. There was a word. Now, we've got to find out who this word is with the scriptures. I can tell you. I can, I can come up with names all over the place and give you 4,000 billion names. But that would mean nothing. But the Bible says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that he is not to be ashamed. Rightly divine the word of it, rightly divine the word of truth. Let's see what the Bible says who this word is and make sure we get right. First John 5 7. That's just before Revelation. First John, second John, Jude Revelation, but we want first John. It's just before Revelation. Revelation, Jude. It's after 2 Peter. We want 1 John 5, 7. First John, 2 John, 3 John, Jude, and Revelation. Now the writer of John, 1 John, is the writer of the Gospel of John. We looked at that last week. So here's John. 
here's the Holy Spirit said, here, John, put it in this part, and then I want you to write later on in this part, because I want you to study. Wouldn't it be great if God put the whole Bible exactly, all right, this is all about hell, this, these pages, and it's all about heaven, these pages, but he wants you to study. He wants you, if you really want to know God, you've got to read and study. He wants you to read the Bible, and we ought to read the Bible all the way through. Start with Genesis, end with Revelation, and then go back to Genesis, back to Revelation. We ought to read it all the way through at least once a year. Now, 1 John 5, 7. For there are three that bear record in heaven. The Father, capital F. The Word, uh-oh, capital W. And the Holy Ghost. These three are one. Father, Word, Holy Ghost. That's the Trinity. And who are the members of the Trinity? The Father, God, the Word, okay, who's that? And the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost. That's got to be Jesus. So when John speaks about in the beginning, the Word, capital W, there's Jesus. In the Gospel about Jesus, God. And the Trinity is three and one and one and three, and, and you can't explain it. That's one of those doctrines. I don't care if you've got 14 doctrines. You can't explain it. But we also have another problem here. And I am not one into much of perverted Bibles, but we do have a problem here with the perverted Bibles. As far as John 5, verse 7. Let me read to you the American Standard Version, the American Bible. And it, will, it, and it is the Spirit that beareth witness, because the Spirit is the truth. And that's also found in RSV. What's missing? The Father, the Word, and the, well, the Holy Spirit's there. They've taken the Trinity out. So if you have an ASV, RSV, you can't study 1 first, first John 5, 7 with John 1, 1. The Amplified Bible, the Good News Bible, the New American Standard Bible, and the NIV. For there are three that bear witness, and that's it. Mine says the Spirit, water, and the blood. The water. That puts baptism as salvation, and not Jesus. That one has replaced the word word with water. And there are people out there who believe salvation is by baptism. Sprinkle, dunk. Well, I can see where... Moses, yep. Yeah, Moses was. Yep. Uh, but it didn't say so. It said metal. So all these years, I'm not saying I'm doing this this way. It's, this is simplified my thinking to try to absorb my understanding of God's word. Yep. So you're saying what, what is your? Uh, the, the King James Bible puts the word capital W. And then that cross-reference runs back to 1 John 1.1. 1, 1. And we're going to see by today's lesson, that is God. Jesus is God. And what your Bible, by saying water is another means of salvation, which is not true, is baptism. So what they have done, they have replaced the word with baptism, water. And you're read in multiple places in the law, in the Christian epistles written by Paul, and in the book of Revelation, you're not to add, subtract, anything yeah. to the Word of God. So what we'll do is we'll just change. Well, it's still there, but the principle is not there because Jesus is not water. Okay. So it's blood. King James is the better. The best. Do you, do you need James. one? Do you need a King James Bible? I 
Well, I have an extra one. I, know, I, I have a very little one. I can get one. I mean, I have a little one. I, I should. We have one, I think, no, in the no. car. Okay. No, I don't. Okay. I can get one. All right. And is it old? old? It was, I mean, my understanding, see, I need something like this that knows how to explain. You know, everybody Amen. says the yep. vows and the knees and the... It's somewhat baffling. See, what, what your Bible does, we have the word, and yours says water. Yeah. You like this. This is my wife, Tracy. All right? But somebody comes along and says, this is his wife, Samantha. And it's not the same. Yeah. Yours is your not name. the same. It's water. And water is not Jesus. You <laughs> water Jesus down. Oh, okay. It's, it's like, like, it, it's like you know, at people go to parties, and what they do is they'll take drinks and they'll water them down. And what your Bible has done is actually done that is watered Jesus down. And the Amplified Bible, the Good News Bible, the New American Standard Bible, NIV says, "Oh, sorry, it's Concordia, it's Old Bible." Oh. And what we read in those Bibles says, "For there are three witnesses." It's two find, no, thank. In your Bible, find Acts seven forty-five. Yeah, sure Acts 7.45. Read what your Bible says. Uh, 45, 45, okay. And it was finally King Solomon who built a house for God. That's in Acts... It's alive, it's removed. Acts 7.45. Mine says... Which also our fathers that came after brought with in with Jesus into the possession of the Gentiles, whom God drave out before the face of our fathers unto the days of David. So the thing is, what we see in the Bibles is they are removing or changing God, and we the Bible is supposed to be holy. It's supposed to be correct, and what's the difference? Well, this one here, let's read what the King James says. It says, the Father, capital F, who's that? That's God. The Word, capital W, we're going to learn, we'll see, that's Jesus. And the Holy Ghost, or the Holy Spirit. Well, what are those three? Those are the Trinity. And like I said, the Amplified, the Good News, the, the New American Standard, the NIV, for there are three that bear witness. We can't even name it's like, oh, if we put God there, someone's going to be offended. Who well, the hell would be offended? The Bible is about God. God's it's about name God. needs to be in the Bible. So why are there differences from the King James? They omitted and subtracted God, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, or the Holy Spirit. A modern Bible cannot, cannot finish this Bible study. It's a big difference. You can't. Yeah. And that's the thing. And the Holy Ghost and the Holy Spirit, it's the same thing. It's the same thing. The Holy Spirit, how I've been explained, is when He's not indwelling in somebody, He's a spirit, you know, He's air. When He takes the shape inside of man, then He becomes that Holy Ghost, you know, the ghost with the, with the sheep and all that, you know, the eyes cut out. When He's just him, Himself, He's the Holy Spirit. And when He's got the shape, that's the Holy Ghost. So as far as the modern Bibles, what is the word when you read 1 John 5? And some Bibles even remove that verse totally and remove it, take it out. So you can't find who that word is. It's, well, what, what is it? Now the Jehovah Witnesses, the New World Translation, for there are three, that, for there are three witness bearers. Now what did they just do? Do you know what they did? What are they called? Aren't they, aren't they called witnesses? There are three witness bearers. They put themselves up there with the Trinity. That's the worst one. The New World, the New World Jehovah Witness Bible says, for there are three witness bearers. And they call themselves witnesses. So they took out the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit, or Holy Ghost, and they put it to three witness bearers. 
That's why the Bible says in 2 John, don't even invite them in your house. Oh, I don't. They're wicked. Don't even wish them a good day. So again, the Bibles have removed Father, God, Word, Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit. Isn't that kind of odd? Isn't that the ones you would think would be in there? Isn't the Bible supposed to be about God? Yes. Well, let's take your modern Bible and find out who it's really about. Mm -hmm. And they've been warned. And I'm going to go so far to say, now this is my personal opinion, you can throw it in the garbage can. I know people differ with me on this. I believe if you change the Bible, I don't believe there's any salvation at all because you're supposed to proclaim Jesus. And if you're removing Jesus, God, and the Holy Spirit, you ain't got that spirit. And a lot of the modern right. ones remove also the blood. The blood is removed from modern Bibles. The That's word, what you, the word his, blood. The Bible that he has says water. You can go to any church of Christ and say, yeah, that's it, water, that's no, it. You're washed in the blood of Jesus Christ. Church of Christ, yeah, they're, they're saved by baptism. Water dogs, what we call them. So, 1 John 1.1, 1, 1, the King James V Bible, the King James Bible, and 1 John 5.7 matches. In the beginning, the Word, 1 John 5.7, the Word with the Father and the Holy Ghost. That's a cross reference. By the same writer, John. Unless you mess with John. And it's funny because in World War II, when you were to write your spouse overseas fighting, and it'd be quite odd the spouse or the military figure would get this letter. And in the page of the letter there'll be holes. And it'll be black and Magic marker. And you'll be able to pick up that letter, you'll be able to see through that letter, and what they're doing is they're taking out information that is not to be discussed. You were not allowed to tell your spouse at home where I am. So they would, you know, hi, I'm over here in the Philippines. They would cut out Philippines. You don't tell you don't tell them where you are. You don't give that information. That's top secret information. And that was for the sake of protecting our soldiers and our country during war. And yet the Bible, if you were to, Thomas Jefferson, the Thomas Jefferson Bible, he, would, he took a King James Bible and said, well, I don't like that word. And he took a pen knife and cut the words he didn't like out of it. And then afterwards wrote the Bible he had after he cut everything out of it. And the Bible says, do not add, do not subtract, do not change. Another problem that you get with modern Bibles is they'll footnote, they'll put a little X, a little T down here. Um, with your Bible, let me go one more place. Let me go a bunny trail here. Acts chapter 8. Acts chapter 8. Let me go this bunny trail. It's a good bunny trail. Acts chapter 8. And I'm not going to read the whole thing. Acts chapter 8. Yeah, that's okay. Acts chapter 8. Okay, 8. Acts chapter 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 8. And this is another place for a perverted Bible. A modern Bible to check your Bible. There's several places to check your King James. In 838, the book of Acts, and when they, uh, 838, and he commanded the chariot to stand still. And they went down both into the water. Oh, yeah, I mean, verse 37, excuse me, verse 37. And Philip said, If thou believest with all thy heart, thou mayest. And he answered, he said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And he commanded the chariot to stand still. And they went down both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch. And he baptized it. Now, what's your verse 37 say? In our Bible, that's verse 39. No, let me see your Bible for I'll show you something. Verse 8. Verse 7.
So the official said, look, here's the word, why can I be baptized? He ordered the chariot to stop, and they both went down into the water and baptized them. Do you think your Bible is missing? Your Bible is missing. It says, I believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Your Bible is taking out the testimony that the, that the eunuch said, I believe Jesus, now be baptized. See, your Bible went right into the water. Just like they did with 1 John 5, 7. You got to believe first before baptism. I was baptized as a baby in the Catholic Church. I don't ever remember that. Saturday is my birthday, April 21st, 1987, where I received Jesus Christ as my Savior. I knelt down in my grandma's living room and I asked Jesus Christ to save my soul. And the following Sunday after that was I baptized to show everybody, hey, listen, I'm saved. This did not save me, the water, but Jesus saved me. So that, that, that's the tampering of the Bible. Yep. So the common knowledge, getting back to our study, 1 John 5, 7, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, the common knowledge of the Trinity is what? It's Jesus, the Father, and the Son. So when 5, 7 says the Father, capital F, the W, capitalized in Word, it's common knowledge. That's Jesus, unless you've got another Bible. Matthew 28, 19. Matthew 28, 19. Now let's look at the Trinity. Let's see what 1 John 5, 7 and, 1st, and, and John 1. Matthew 28, 19. Matthew 28, 19. Now let's see the Trinity written out. And then let's cross-reference the W of First of, of First John 5, 7 and John 1, 1. And verse 19 of Matthew 28. Go therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, capital F, and of the Son, capital S, and the Holy Ghost, we'll run that back to 1 John 5, 7, the Father and the Holy Ghost are there, but what has changed? The Word and the Son. And that's not changing the Bible, that's saying the Word is the Son. Scripture with Scripture. And again, the modern Bibles will mess with that verse. And they will actually remove the Father's and then you'll get churches out there. They will, uh, there's another place in the Bible. It, it, uh, it's the Holy Spirit, I think it is. They, well, you got baptized this way. They fight about the baptism, but the salvation lies in Jesus. Holy Spirit. Yeah, they, they're the same, yep. So 1 John 1, I mean, 1 John 5, 7 and John 1, 1 are cross-references. The Word is Jesus Christ. So, real quick, John 1, 1. We're going to go find Jesus in the creation. Based upon what we've learned through the King James Bible. 1 John, I mean, I keep saying 1 John. John 1, 1. <laughs> You get your mind stuck on one thing, and then boom, it's... In the beginning was the Word. In the beginning, we're going to look at the creation. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. All right, let's run the Genesis 1-1 again. read the first few verses of Genesis 1, starting verse 1. In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. 
and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. John 1.1 1, 1 said Jesus was there. Where is he? I mean, the Bible can't be lying. All right, let's look. In the beginning, there's God, capital F, Father, right? Created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit, capital F. All right, there's the F, capital F, Father. There's the capital H, Holy Spirit, that we find in 1 John 5, 5, 7, correct? Remember, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. So we found the Father God, we found the Holy Spirit, but where is Jesus? What did 1 John 5 say He was? What did John 1, 1 say He was? The Word. The Word. I'm going to show you Jesus in Genesis 1. Genesis 1, verse 3. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. Now we're going to come back to this verse again later. But where is... As far as this study right now, where is Jesus in that verse? God said. What's the word of God? That's what God speaks. So when God said, that's Jesus. That's the word. John 1.1 1, 1 and 1 John 5.7. God created by Jesus Christ, by his word. Uh, Chapter 1, verse 6. Watch this. And God said, there's Jesus again. The Word. Capital W. John 1, 1. Chapter 1, verse 9. And God said, there's Jesus again. Chapter 1, verse 11. And God said. And 1, 14. And God said. 1, 20. 1, 24. 1, 26. 128 and 129, 10 times, and God said. So in the beginning, God, there's the Father, created the heaven and earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God, there's the Holy Spirit, moved upon the face of the waters, and God said, there's Jesus Christ. There's the Holy Trinity in the beginning, no Big Bang. God didn't speak a Big Bang. God said, let there be, and that's... Jesus before he was born. So life is Jesus. Life is Jesus. That's Jesus before he was born of Mary. He's the Word. God said that's the Word. The Bible is the Word of God, right? So the Word of God is Jesus Christ, according to what we've done so far. John 1 1, 1 John 5 7, and Genesis 1. So when you add or subtract or footnote the Word of God, you are adding and subtracting to Jesus. And even his Bible says, we're going to just remove the word and we're going to make Jesus work. We're going to take the Ethiopian unit and we're going to say, forget believe on Jesus, just go get baptized. They have totally, by Acts chapter 8, removed Jesus. All right, let's take another thing. In the beginning, God. A scientist has removed Jesus and God because they don't believe in the beginning, God. They believe Big Bang. Big Bang is not God, it's not the Holy Spirit, it's not Jesus. So they did not. So you get somebody to say theistic evolution. Theistic evolution is when somebody, okay, it was, it was God that created, but he just let it go off like the Big Bang. You can't have God in the, in, in the Big Bang because he's not here according to the scriptures. So the Bible, the word of God that is Jesus and it's been tampered with, you are tampering with Jesus. And the Bible says that Jesus is going to judge and when you're going to stand at the great white throne judgment and you're going to stand before Jesus condemned and not saved, lost, and you have tampered with his Bible, I would not want to be in your shoes. You're standing before the Word and you're going to have to give account. The Bible says, how every idle word man shall speak, you shall give an account thereof. All right, give an account while you change it. That's just as bad as somebody, let's take the Catholic religion. They believe their works are greater than the works of Jesus. 
You're going to stand before Jesus one day explaining to you why you think you were so better than the gospel. How what you did was better what you did on that cross. I will not want to be in your shoes. So, if the word is Jesus, and it is, according to 1 John 5, 7, and John 1, 1, and when we see God speaking in Genesis chapter 1, there is the Trinity present in the first three verses. Three, Trinity. So when the Word was God, that's the creation. Back to John 1.1. 1, 1. In this particular weird statement that John makes, In the beginning was the Word. In the beginning was the Word. We just read where the Word was in Genesis 1. It's when God spoke. The Word was with God. What I say is with me. There is no way, unless you're a ventriloquist, that you know, make your voice over here. And in the game, I don't know if there's any illusions to that, how they do it. I don't know. But your voice is with you. So when God spoke, Jesus Christ was with God through the voice. And the Word was God. Now that's not saying Jesus is not God no more, as a Jehovah Witness will say. That verse, in with the creation reference that it is in. John just told you that that word, God said, and 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 God said ten times, that's God. And who is that? That's Jesus. And the Jehovah Witnesses will say, well, see, Jesus, if you say he's the word, he was God, he's no longer God. Get off my doorstep. Because then I will throw at them John 10, 30, Jesus said, I and the Father are one. And then I will throw at you what uh, Thomas said, my Lord, my God. Don't you even dare think about coming to my house if you're going to do that to Jesus. So we saw God, we saw the Holy Spirit, and we saw Jesus. Genesis 1, 1, 2, 3, John 1, 1, 1 John 5, 7 are all reference verses. Now we must understand and believe what we've just learned to proceed further. If a man sat here and believed in science, he cannot go no further because he will not believe what we say. If an, if an atheist was here sitting at this table and he said, well, I don't believe in God, he can't go no further. That's right. Now, in the beginning, God, the, in the beginning, the Word, First John lays out Jesus Christ as God. You cannot go no further than John unless you believe who Jesus is. Let's go back to Genesis 1 again, and let's see what God done. And God threw something into the engine of man, Genesis 1, 1. In the beginning, God, let's stop right there. In the beginning, God created, let's stop right there. Why are children killing each other in the public school systems? Because they don't believe in the beginning, God created. If you don't believe in God, then what are you? A scientist can go no further than Genesis 1-1 because when he reads, in the beginning God created, no, he thinks Big Bang. An atheist cannot go any further than Genesis 1-1. In the beginning God stopped right there and said, I don't believe in God. Religion. In the beginning God, well, I believe in gods. I believe in this woman. I believe in this man. I believe in myself. And when you get to the Gospel of John, what do you got to now believe? You got to believe, not only you got to believe God, but you got to believe Jesus to go any further. And that's why I say, when, when you know somebody who's agnostic, they're, they're, they're almost there, they're, they're trying, they want to understand. Go through, read each chapter of the Gospel of John, read one chapter a day, pray and read. If they're really searching, but if they're not, they're not going to get it. Now, how important is all this? Let's go to Hebrews 11. And we, like, Scripture, Scripture, and all the Scriptures backing up, look what we find in Hebrews 11. 
after Peter. No, before Peter. <coughs> Hebrews 11. And this is the great faith chapter. And there is something in here, what we're studying now, that's very profound. In verse 6. Now 6, the Bible says, is the number of man. A man. So what we've learned so far about you can't go any further than in the beginning God if you don't believe God. You can't go any further in the beginning the Word if you don't believe Jesus is God. Watch this. But without faith, Hebrews 11, 6, it is impossible to please Him. For he that cometh to God must believe that He is God. That He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. You can't get baptized and, and believe you're right with God because you've got to believe on Jesus. You can't believe that you're going to be okay, you're going to heaven because you've got some religion, because that's not God. So creation is by a creator, not evoluted. A creator is the creator, God, the Son, the Holy Spirit. All three were present. And then you've got to believe where was God? Where did He come from? The Bible never questions the identity in the presence of God. He's always been. He always will. The Bible takes it for granted. God has always been. And don't try to get thinking about that because your brain's going to go, because you go, well, what? there was no way. God has always been. The angels one day were, were created. We don't know when. The cherubim were one day created. We don't know when. The earth and the heavens were created. We don't know when. But God has never been created. He's the creator. And you've got to believe that. With the passages we just read. You can't go any further. And in the modern Bibles, what are you going to do with the modern Bible when they defraud God and change God? You know how many gods there are out there? A diamond does Plus tax. Look at, if you ever have fun, I did it one time. Pick up the San Diego Yellow Pages. The San Diego Yellow Pages is in volumes. It takes up a whole shelf. In the Yellow Pages, find the part where it says churches. I couldn't tell you how many pages there were. And for each of those categories, Catholic, Ro uh, Roman Catholic, uh, Baptist, Lutheran, and all those, each of them have a God. There's a Baptist God out there. Just because a Baptist doesn't mean he has the God. I've been Baptist where their pastor is a God. Their church is a God. Their mother is a God. Water is a God. So what we got to get down to is we got to resolve, as in this Bible study, do we believe God is God, Creator? Lord Jesus Christ is God, the Creator. The Holy Spirit is God, the Creator. Then we can go on. And a method of growing to God, you say, well, I want to keep growing. I want to keep growing. I don't want to stop. Never come to the point when God shows you something in the Bible and say, I don't believe it. Once you say, I don't believe it, that's when God stops. And you're not going to get back until you repent and get right. Well, there are times when I even question yes. just because of my pea brain. Yes, it, that happens. It takes somebody... Knowing more than I do yep. to explain. Well, see, the scripture. see, sometimes that's yourself or that's Satan trying to mess. Satan's always trying to mess me up. I'll be reading something in the Bible and Satan said, Do you really believe that? And I'll be like, Oh, wait a minute. Whoa, whoa stop. I can't believe you just put that thought in yeah, my head. Yeah. And, and that happens often. In that moment, you guys say, Hey, God help. And there'll be times, listen, if you're saved and sins are under the blood, Satan will come up to you and say, hey, what about that sin? And the only thing you can hear is say, Satan, it's under the blood. Remember when you did that? Amen. And, or, here's another option. Amen. Here's another option. You turn to God and say, God, if that sin is not under the blood, please. I am sorry, please put it under the blood now. Forgive me, Lord. And then the next time it comes up, Satan, hey, you think whatever you want, it's under the blood. My sins are gone, 1 John 1, 9. God forgot them. 
And like you were saying too, we'll be reading, we'll be going like, many times. My pea brain, my the whole, my stupidity that Satan will say, "Do you really believe God? Do you really believe that? Do you listen? I sometimes doubt the rapture. Sometimes I think, well, maybe the rapture happened. I'll still be here. No, that's not me. The Bible says I am saved. Amen. It, it's the understanding part of what the Bible is trying to, uh, the Word is trying to, to say, and I don't understand. At that point, and then I go to this one, and then I, which I'm glad that I met you, that uh, you know, I'm just out of coincidence, uh, it did bring up. I, 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 I mean, I did bring up the whole Word. Yep. You said, oh, we're going to have a Bible study on uh, John. But, but what I'm saying is that, you know, I've been trying to go back and forth with my addition to theirs, and theirs is... Yeah, I would, I, I would, don't even no, think about them no more. No, I'm not. I, I know you're working with them. No, I don't work with them. Really? I, I have acquaintances. Okay. And I thought I could reach out just to have somebody to talk to that brings up God, that brings up Jesus. But then that they'll pamphlet, turn you away from the anybody field. who's yeah, well yeah, skilled. Right. Stay away from them. that pamphlet. I'm dealt with them. Actually, brought out what I've been hearing over the years. Over the years, I, I go back when I was you know, 18, 19, when I was facing them, and they would double team me like they usually do, yep. even today, as far as them trying to explain. But King James, with my pea brain, it seems to be, so I need output, input, to understand what God well, has to say. In your, in your stance, I'm going to tell you exactly what Jesus did and how he conquered the devil. In the Bible, Matthew 4, Scripture. You want to deal with the Jehovah Witnesses, you got to break out the Bible, you ask my wife. They will leave my house. Because I will bring an open Bible. I had one guy one time, he came with his son, and I kept turning. I, he was well versed. If they're well versed, don't do anything. They are. They're, you got to find someone who's young in it, who's new. That's the person. Like I said, here's a guy, he's well versed, and he had his son. I kept point, I kept looking at the son, forgetting the father. Said, you know, Jesus said, I and the father are one. I'd say to the son, I'd say, you know, Philip said, My Lord, my, my, Lord, my God. The guy would interrupt. I said, Shut up, I'm talking to the kid. And I would throw scripture at that young man into his heart. And one day, hopefully, that scripture. See, you can't, you couldn't get it with the father because he's too well versed. Right. And the only way you can tackle with the sword. Now, they will bring the New World Translation. And I laugh. Because I'll pick up their New World. I say, oh, New World? You got a worldly Bible? Wow! <laughs> and they get mad. And then I say, well, I say, wait a minute. What did Jesus say about the world? Marvel not, the world hates you. And I will use the Bible and Scripture. And then they'll, most of them will just walk away and leave. I haven't, I haven't ripped the Scripture, ripped their pamphlets right out of my hands. Like, wait a minute, you invited me. Don't come. Oh, come on. <laughs> well, I, I know now, I know you are no longer to try to convert people because they, they just don't know the truth. Get in the Scriptures and you can. Get in the King James Bible Scriptures. Because they care, they will also bring King James too. Because they know everyone King James. They're phonies. They'll bring anything you want to do, like a Catholic. But I'm not saying avoid them completely, but get verse in verses. And I got something I'll print it. If I'm going to print it out, we got a little Jehovah Witness sheet. And we got Jehovah Witness material you can take it off our table. That, that one it really opened up my, my thinking. Uh, through the years, I do remember conversing with this and that and brought it up, but then there was more so. But I, I don't want to confront him because I'm not scriptural up to say. Well, amen, yeah. Ron. We'll pray for that. We'll keep you in prayer until you will. There you go. Yeah. We're all growing. We'll never, till the day he brings us home, we're not going to know we all know, that he wants us to know. We know a woman That's who right. works with Jehovah Witnesses, and she's taking a woman named Judy out of the Jehovah Witnesses. And she's having Bible study with her right now. Trying to grow. It, it's possible. 
Apostle. Was a friend of ours. I mean, that case right there, if, if you can get in the scriptures and do it, you can pull them out of the mouth of the lion. The Bible speaks to the lion. It's the saint. And what a reward you would get. Pulling, pulling them out. Like I said, I deal with Catholics because I come from, I know how to deal with them with Catholics. Me too. But we must come down to the main thing is the foundation of our beliefs is who exactly who God is, who exactly who Jesus is, and who exactly the Holy Spirit is. And we have seen today that Bibles have denied it. And I see that all the time with it when I was in the prison ministry. You have all kinds of thoughts and Bibles and thoughts. But like I said, the modern Bibles, we, they don't believe it. The public education don't believe it. So, what we learned today that Jesus is God and God is Jesus, creator and all that, how are we going to solve this school shooting problem? you got to bring God and Jesus and the Bible back into the schools with prayer. That's right. Now, I guarantee when somebody goes in there with an automatic rifle, I guarantee when, when someone's shooting in the hallway, I guarantee someone's praying. You're not going to stop it. But who have you taught them to pray to? What about our nation? One nation under God. You want to pick one? Christianity is going in the closet and Mohammedanism is coming out. Yeah. Sodomites coming out. Pray to the Sodomite God. They have prayer, they have prayer mats in schools, but you can't pray to God, our God in school. They can so see, the thing is, see, as, as, a, as a Christian, a group of Christians, we're told to go in all the world and preach the gospel. And someone says, well, I believe in God. You've got to question them. Which God do you believe in? Mary's a God, but she can't do nothing. And they'll say, well, judge not least you judge. Well, i got to know how i got to treat you. Are you a saved child of God that is willing to grow? Or are you not even known in God's presence? Somebody comes up to you with science. Okay, I'm going to deal with you as a lost heretic. Somebody comes up to you as a Catholic. Well, you know some knowledge. You just don't know enough. And somebody comes to you as a Jehovah Witness. You don't believe Jesus is God. Now, you got to be careful because there are saved people the Jehovah Witnesses because, oh, let's go out and get people saved. I mean, we've got a notch in my belt, and then you don't train them. That's exactly what we're doing. You, you come out of the Catholic Church. We want to train you. We want you to do right. We're not... Then it wouldn't do us no good you come out of the Catholic the Church Mormons and the Jehovah too, Witnesses come. The Mormons, come. too. They'll come to your house with the right. King I'm James Bible, but when you get to their services, they're not teaching you the King James Bible. I know. When I got saved in April 1987, 21st, coming up this Saturday, a man, I'm going to say, his name is Joe. He's not going to give his full name. He witnessed to me, told me how to get saved. Amen. Glory to God. Never did anything with me. And two years later, I was being called to ministry, turned me away, my whole church turned me away. No one ever took a Bible with me. No one showed me anyway. There was a few things that people did show me, thank God, that, you know, tracks were not collection. <laughs> one man took me out witnessing, knocking on doors. But today, the, the thing is, oh, we got you saved, and then they leave you alone. Yeah. And that's where the Jehovah Witnesses come in. And if you've got a saved Jehovah Witness, you can... You gotta get him. Okay, let's get him back to Jesus. You know they're losing rewards. Now, are they? Are they uh, wanting to know? Are they? Are they? Some. To yes. Some. Yes. Some are trained to avoid and not even talk to you if you start bringing up this scripture. Hey, the so, thing is like this: it'd be yes. like, like my daughter, if she wanted to learn how to make macaroni and cheese, I don't want to make it. I want to eat it. <laughs> So she would be willing to learn how to do it. Me? No. Just put it on my plate. And that's how you, you will have Jehovah Witnesses that are willing and able, and you'll have some like, well, you're the heretic. Well, this is the battle that I don't want to, you know, the first. It is a battle. Yeah. It, that's the battle. And what we've already started today, the first round is Jesus is God, and he's the word. If you show someone the Jehovah's Witnesses what we just showed, and he goes, ooh, whoa. You might have a foot in the and door. And then you, you, you got a hook. Snag it slowly. Don't, <laughs> you're going to rip his jaw out. I've done that with fish. Well, there again, too, that's changing their heart and changing their mind. There you go. And, and it takes a lot of prayer. And with my past, to now, I had to turn away from 
the steam that I was doing and water too. And yep. the reason why So you're saying Yeah. I, I because one of the words that I remember somewhere it says that he promises peace. And through God's word, the scriptures that I read even out of this, trying to understand it, I and, and my new lifestyle, my change up habit uh, has given me peace. God has given me peace. Yep. That can only be by Jesus has. Christ. And now, are you, are you to say true Jesus Christ? Or? I'm saved by the power and by the testimony Amen. and the merit of Jesus Christ alone and nothing else. By His shed blood on the cross. The gospel that Jesus Christ the suffered and died peace. according to the scriptures, was buried and rose again the third day according to That is the only way I am saved. That there's nothing I can do. I'm receiving these are the words that I have to present yeah. at, the, at the right time, at the, at the correct uh, scriptures. See, the scariest thing for, for people, when you get in a public ministry and you deal with people, you come across very, many scary things when you deal with the people is when you have the nerve to think that you are better than Jesus. Mm. Something you've done. And you're going to stand before him one day. Now, See, the Bible says those bad. nail pierced hands and the nail pierced feet are still there. And the, the bruises from that, that crown of thorns is still on his head. You mean you're going to tell me you're going to stand before that Jesus one day and you're going to tell him his mother was better than he was? Mm. And Jesus is going to say, with your religion, depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. I never knew you. That's worse than God saying, go to hell. I know man says, but imagine God telling someone, go to hell. Depart from me. He says, depart from me. He will say, depart from me. And yet, if a Christian that does well, well done. And I know there's more to that verse. But I would be content enough just to have God say, well done. Never mind a good and faithful servant. I want well done. Well, and the only way I can get well done is by what Jesus done. That was well done. It has to be with my life to where I, how I am at this day is the turning away in order to get that type of compliment that's well done. But I yeah, see, it works it, after salvation. Yes. Yeah. Works, works you have to be saved first. Then yeah. you show through your works what you give up for the Lord. See, the Lord loved me enough. That's now right. that I'm saved, I ought to be loving Him enough to do something. Well, I have accepted Jesus Christ. Amen. His death, His burial, and His resurrection. Amen. And through His shed blood, uh, I have to be not of the Lord. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. You know you got a war. You are a schizophrenic right now. There is a war inside all of us right now. There is God the Holy Spirit, and there's the flesh. There's God the Holy Spirit, and there's your flesh. And when you want to do right, you will see your flesh. And when you and you're right in the Lord, and your flesh wants the Lord, and you see the Holy Spirit gathering against you. God is good because God wants us to do right. Yes, He is. But that free will, it's up to you. It's up to you. Even as a saved Christian. Right, yeah, like to you. I told you it was right. I've been saved 27 years. I, still, well, today, I was saved, believe it or not, in the Church of God when my mother-in-law got me saved. Over there. That was her church. Yeah, I was saved in 1987. Then, my grandma's living room. Really? Praise yeah. God. Me I went to church Sunday. Oh. And there was a funny thing about it. You know, like I, say, I went to church Sunday. Back and I was convicted. And I called up, I said, listen, you know, i got to do something. Something. I don't know what it is. He said, well, we'll send people to you Saturday. I'm like, I'm thinking, now, what if I died Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday, or Friday? I would go into hell. They told me. I said, listen, I knew in my heart. Uh, maybe I was saved then. I don't know. I don't, there's something i got to do. We'll send somebody Saturday, almost a week later. Oh, I'm thanking God. Thank God you waited for me. And I still haven't died yet. But, you know, thank you that I trusted your Savior. Because I guarantee if Satan, Satan knows what I was going to be. Satan tried to kill me eight times when I was a child. Oh, wow. I'm surprised. I mean, maybe, if I look back, maybe he tried to kill me during that week, too. I don't know. Maybe God held it up. But it's 
a wonder to serve God. Yes, it is. Amen. Let's pray. Lord God, may your work be exalted again. Lord, with us that are here. Lord, as we go about public ministry, whatever religion, whatever belief, even there is no belief. Lord, may we have the scriptures in our heart that will come out of our mouth. May we study, memorize verses. Lord God, may we be a pleasing to you that you be happy. What a blessed thing, Lord God, to make you happy. God Almighty, Creator, Savior, if we were to put a smile on your face. May we do that today. For Jesus' sake, we pray. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Well, next time again, next week, Lord willing. See you guys Friday. Yeah, I'll be here Friday. I can think it's tomorrow. Friday. Oh, Friday, yeah. Oh,